Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, welcome to Tumping Up for Cruising. I'm Sherry and this is Rotto. Hey. <laughs> and we just wanted to sit down and have a bit of a chat about our recent holiday. Uh, we were working out at Kings Canyon and then we, for about what, six weeks? Yep. And then we got annual leave and we went to Darwin. Had the spectacular time. If you haven't seen our videos yet, I'll link some of them down below. But we got to Litchfield National Park. Uh, yep. And you'll see in the video that I'll put up after this one or before this one that we went to the biggest termite mound there is. Uh, took a little bit of footage there, got back in the truck, and about 60 seconds after we yep. hit back on the road, we came around a corner heading towards Bachelor and just there was a motorbike with two people on the ground. Yep, exactly. So for me, we, yeah, exactly. We've just been to the Termite Mound. I was a little bit crabby actually, uh, being a bit selfish because we're on our trip. We're planning to go and see our friends, uh, Sally and Ben, for, uh, over in Kununurra and then go across to Broome. And we spent the time to go into Lynch, Litchfield National Park. We've been in there before, but we just wanted to go back into um, the Valley of the Kings and you know I'm going oh great you know all this stuff's closed and the swimming holes were closed and the waterfalls were, were shut. We were, uh, having, we were having a little bit of a bitch. Yeah so we were having a bit of a well especially me I don't think SB she's a pretty happy person but I was yeah don't normally get down but I was yeah because we don't get much time off work I was like what's going on so yeah, so we're coming around the corner, and next minute it was all just so so surreal, wasn't it, Bob? Like it, um, mm. yeah, to come around the corner, here's a motorbike in the, in the yeah, in the middle of the road with two people on the ground, on the ground, and um, really in a bad way. They were scared. Not only were they in shock, but they just come off. But they were looking this way because they're thinking someone's going to run over us because it was literally just mm. off the bend, yeah, on a double line. So yeah. And as I braked um, to, because the, the bike was basically in the middle of the road, but on our side, so about close to the centre line, as I braked to go round it, I could hear the plastic underneath uh, SB's side of the, the truck. So I've swerved to go round them because I didn't realise, I didn't expect it to happen. I then brought the truck to a stop just in, in front of where the, where the people were and the accident was. You put um, those hazards on, pulled over. And then we pretty much went into management mode. That's what we do. We're, we're, yep. we're, we're good at, um, you know, not that we come across accidents all the no. time, but we're into management mode. Right so, right on the two way. Yep. So I said to Sherry, or well, Sherry jumped we didn't out. Discuss anything. No, we didn't. No. You just jumped out. Sherry still had a bikini on. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I said, I'm going to get on the UHF. You know, you that was my. You didn't even say that to me, actually. Didn't I? No. Oh, no. I thought you were going to get out of the car. Yeah. So yeah. I just um, stuck the hazard lights on on the truck, on the hurricane. Jumped on the UHF, went straight to Channel 5 because that's what I've been taught, you know, working remote, that um, that's what you should do, you know what I mean? It's, and you wouldn't believe it, it didn't work. It's like normally a Mayday call yeah, on Channel so, 5. Yeah, uh, so called, you know, emergency, emergency, emergency on Channel 5, no answer. Jumped onto Channel 40 and went emergency, 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 and the UHF lit up. We were about 30 k's out from Stewart Highway or Bachelor. Um, or well, maybe not, maybe 18. It was 18k. So, 18k, sorry. 30 yeah. And uh, I got a heap of response off channel 40 from, you know, I don't know who it was, can't tell you. They were just legends. And they sorted themselves out, and one guy spoke to me, and he said, Mate, I'm just going to get on top of the hill, get where you are. Um, I, the message I relayed to him when he was calling the ambulance or the uh, people was that. I thought we were 30 k's out, you know, because I was just in shock. And he said, I'm gonna contact the ambulance and I just said, thanks mate, jump back out of the truck, started running back to What you. he didn't know at the time was, mm. we had had no service on the phone right up until that point. I jumped out of my bikinis, just running towards the people because I too was terrified someone was gonna come around the corner and I'm like, it still gives me goosebumps. Mm. So within two paces from getting to the people, my phone went doof doof, so it was back in service. Just randomly came back into service. So I was straight on to triple O, but Rod didn't know that at the time because mm. he was 
on the two way. Yeah, so then uh, I st we, got, we got the two people off the side of the road, that was the first thing, and sat them down. Uh, the lady was, her feet were really bad and, and, her, and her legs, and uh, the rider, the he, he was standing, but he, he was, was non-responsive. Like he was just in, in shock. In shock. Yeah, and their boots were off. You know, their uh, shoes had come off. They only had joggers on. Joggers on. They yeah. were lying across the road. Um, I then I think there might have been a lady turn up, like a, just a lady. She that was must, going the opposite. Direction. Yeah, she was going the opposite direction. So we just said to her, "Can you go around the, on the bend of the corner and just mm. wave people down?" Because they were just coming around. No one was stopping, they were just coming around the corner. Yeah, and um, yeah, and she was really awesome. Like, she was, she was a bushy, you could feel it, you know, she was pretty straight into the people, you know, stop and everything like that. And yeah, so it, it's probably funny at the moment, it probably sounds like there's two stories because really I don't know what Cherry was experiencing. We weren't, we haven't really sat down and discussed it. That's why I said I wanted to do this film. We then, um, for me, I'll just keep going on more a little bit, is we stood the bike up, the power was still on. There was no fuel smell, but I was, I've always been taught, you know, in emergency situations, make sure that the, you know, the power's off. So we turned the power off on the bike, stood the bike up, got into neutral, got that off the road. And you wouldn't believe it, the Maui vans and that would come around the corner exactly like us. So I think everybody was looking, which was making it worse. So they were nearly running into us as I come around the corner, so we're pretty desperate to get every, get them off the road. Yeah, and I think it was just after that, mm. that a bike coming from the opposite direction with yep. two people, a male and a yep. female, they were fantastic, mm. such a big help to all of us. So they pulled over mm. on their side, come over to us, and by that time, Rod had gone back to the vehicle and grabbed our um, summer, some, chase, summer chase, chase a towel, towel out, yeah. and we were just holding it above them. Like yep. So on the, I was still on the phone, I mm. think, at this point, mm. and they were telling me, don't give them water, don't give any first aid, nothing. They just said, are they responsive? They're asking me a few questions. Mm. And they were really good. They were on the phone to me the whole time and just telling me, you're doing a good job, stay with them. You're doing everything that you can. So that was pretty comforting at the time as well. You know, we uh, while Sherry was doing that, we got the, the bicycle ride, uh, motorcycle rider that pulled up to help the others. Um, we got, I went back and grabbed the camp chairs out and we put them up on the camp chairs. For, I think you know, a brand new chair too. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's funny too because I, Sherry was talking to him on the talking to the ambulance on the phone or the emergency services, sorry, on the phone. And I, my first thing was, and I know that you know, I meant to, because it was stinking hot. We we probably drank three liters of water as this was all going on mm -hmm. um, between us, and we were trying to help the other people, and it felt really bad because we were dehydrating and we couldn't. Give anything, give anything to the to the people and you could tell you know the lady was really really hurting and i think the guy was in a bad bad way he had um I think he had internal, internal injuries, injuries you know yeah and um and we couldn't give him a drink so we just tried to keep the shade off him and even when you're trying to do that for a long period of time hold your hands in the air well it was four of us and we kept swapping we the, well, the towel to move it um then the police turned up and the lady that was controlling the traffic. The first lady that turned up, she went down and got the road game. There was a road crew working about three kilometers down the road. They come back, they were awesome, weren't they, Barb? They yeah, just... they were fantastic. They had two cars. Yeah. So they put one at the start before the corner and mm. one on the other corner, because we were actually on almost like a U-turn, weren't we? Yep. It was two bends. Yeah, it was two bends, yeah, two sweeping bends. The emergency services, the services turned up. They were amazing. Care flight. Yep, talked to Sherry about what she, done, interacted, and the police were good too. Everybody yeah. was good. And then we could hear the chopper coming. The, the, the policeman said, oh, there's the, there's a the care flight chopper coming. You know, I think they landed at the turnlight mound that yeah. we had just left prior to this yeah. accident. They landed, that was the closest place. I'm gonna block the road. Mm. Um, when I was talking to the policeman, he was gonna block the road, but because it was on a bend and cambered, they just said, it's probably not flat enough. So they um, then landed the chopper at the turbine mounds, big turbine mounds there at Litchfield. Litchfield. Yeah, so then we basically loaded, they, there, was, there was two of the emergency services, one was an ambulance, paramedics, and one was a troopie. Uh, they ended up loading them both into the paramedic van because it was lower, and, and it, that's where we all, we all separated. 
So yeah, for me, from then, I, like I was in shock. Sherry was definitely in, we we're both in shock. Well, we no... did a video actually that night. We ended up staying at Adelaide River, guys. So you go back and have a look bar. at that. Yeah, yeah, the 303 bar there. Rod did a video that night and, and I don't think I realized I was still in shock, but if you have a look at that video, mm. Not to say that you weren't, but you mm. were trying, I think, to get yourself out of it. I, mm. I was pretty much still non-responsive. I wasn't, I don't know, my... Yeah, and we sort of went from there, and the next day was just sketchy. Like, to get back on the road, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm a tough guy, but I do it off oh, Trap Australia. We travel remote all the time. We take every back road that we can, you know, to shorten the trips. And I spend hours and hours, like, sometimes, you know, uh, you know moving gear... We could spend five days on the road to take the digger and the, the truck and the bobcat or the hurricane, whatever we're taking to the jobs. We, we spend a lot of time on the road and I feel confident in what I do on the road. I know my fatigue levels and things like that. When I can sleep, when I can't, you know, that's we always carry our swag. But I was rattled. Um, I think we went to Uta Falls. We were gonna camp there. I said to Sherry, I can't do it. Mm. I said, let's just, let's go home, mm. what I said. Yeah. You know, um, we, I think the other thing too, sorry to interrupt, yeah. is that, it, I mean, obviously what we came across wasn't nice to see, no. but what it did was make us think about Reality. everything from that step on. Because had we been 30 to 60 seconds less longer at that termite mound, mm. so these people were actually travelling in the opposite direction to us. I don't think we explained that. So they had they were going the opposite direction. They had come off, he said his tyre had popped, and they'd done a 180 degree. So when they came off and went around, we came around, on, they were on our side of the road. We thought they were going our direction until later on we discovered they were actually going the opposite direction. So had we been a little bit later, or sorry, quicker from leaving the termite mound, they could have been under our wheels. You know, it was a frightening thing. Yeah, 100%. It was really frightening. So we made ourselves, we got back down to, or we went, yeah, we went to Ida Falls, we picked our dog up. Uh, we had a swim at Catherine and everything and tried to, I don't know, put it in the back of our mind. I think we're still in shock, but definitely we were going to go and see Sally and Kununurra and it was something that we've probably been looking forward to meeting her for a long time and going over and spending time with her and um, getting on country, but that didn't happen and we just went, I just said to Cheryl, we're going to go home. So we did, um, it was funny until we got down to the freeways and got off the Stuart Highway, back to where the traffic started to get less. We were, we were, we were scared. Frightened. We were, yeah, every, it's funny what it does to you. Mm. Every car that came past, we were just, we were jittery, yeah. weren't we? Yeah, you're looking and you know, you see a lot of people do lining up and I do it. You line up to, to get past the road train, so you'd be sitting in behind them, talking to them. And then, you know, you can get up it, you know what I mean, to get out around the road train. So, you you know, I know we come in the other direction when I see cars, especially if you see like the Maui vans, not picking on those guys, but you know, picking on, uh, not trying to pick on anybody, but you see them guys that aren't used to it and they pull out around a 53 metre road train, you, you know, you've got to have a lot of grunt. You know, that's, people say, why do you love land cruisers and things? Oh, I love them because they've got the power. You know, when you travel, you want, to not be second guessing yourself when you pull out to pass a road train. And that's what worries me when other people are coming. So I was getting jittery, but I think when we got down to the Barkley homestead, uh, we just set up camp, didn't we? And then, um, yeah, and then went to the Blue Healer and then, yeah, come home, but it was, okay. yeah, we haven't moved. Um, today's the first day we went over to Rocky to take the- and It's been a week today. Yeah. Did and normally mean? I'm like, come on, pack up, let's go camping. Let's, <laughs> I don't sit still, I'm not a sit still -y type of person. I'm a, let's go full drive and let's be in the bush. And you know, an SB comes along, she, she loves it as well. But yeah, I burn all our energy up on that. We're very earthy people though. So mm. in all honesty, as bad as what it was though, I also take a reality check and go, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Mm. You know, we were meant you know, like Rod said, he was having a whinge about the waterfalls not being open, but you know what, had they been open, mm. you know, everything would change. It's just one of those things. So everything happens for a reason. We were meant to be there that day and help those people out. And um, yeah, and I think to see how quickly the, the emergency, the police, the emergency services, uh, how well they done their job and to hear that care flight chopper coming in, mm. I don't know. 
what you can up. Oh, I just I, I, I got, I got my hairs. The time we going. left, it was an hour and a half from the time we came across mm. that because I can tell by my phone. I rang them at four minutes to two, mm. and I think we left there at. It was the 13th of May, yeah. Yeah, right. Was it? Mm. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, day after your birthday. Mm. And, uh, and I think, you know, we've all had a big scare with COVID, and I think we learned something from it and how quickly we start forgetting, you know. There we are, you know, people dying all around the world, and I was pissing and whinging about. Uh, you know, waterfalls being closed, and next minute, these two, those two people's bike, the bike was a hire bike, mm. and um, you know their whole trip was ruined. Not that their trip would be, and I said it to the to the rider. I think his name was Trevor. Trevor and uh, D. I yeah, I and I it. said, mate, you know, he was worried about his misses, and as you would, you know, and now I think he was starting to blame himself, and as you would, you know, I know what I would as if I'd hurt. SB, you know what I mean? So, yeah, anyhow, that was our experience and we're still living with it at the moment. It's probably not going to stop us travelling, but it's definitely slowed us down and made us appreciate things and appreciate emergency services and care flight, 195,000%. <laughs> I yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. You know? I, Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's all about. Anyway, guys, that's just I think we just needed to talk about it. You know, even now I've heard things Rod say that I didn't know, and vice versa. So I just think we needed to have a bit of a chat about it and get it out and mm. uh, share it with you and just say, you know what, take care. Yeah. Please take care on the roads because yeah. we're all doing it now. Everyone wants to travel, so just be careful. And I won't be a squeaky ass when I see a care flight <laughs> uh, bin go past. I'll make sure. I normally donate to them things, but I. Yeah. Definitely to see it and experience it. Uh, when we were in Lightning Ridge and Mount Isa, we always donated the Royal Flying Doctors. And we used to see the planes coming in and out of Lightning Ridge for the emergencies for them. And same as Cape York, yeah. um, when we were living in the Cape, they'd yeah. fly in and out. You know, the Royal Flying Doctors to, to bring people in and out of the Cape that had, you know, had accidents on the track, on the development road or the tele track and that. And um, yeah, it is reality. I think that's the biggest thing. we. We travel and we Instagram and we YouTube and, and it's so quick. But you know, that brought, brought me back to reality anyway. Mm. Alrighty, thank right, you everyone, so much. Thanks for tuning in. As always, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and chatty bye until the next one. Travel safe. Bye.